Okay. Um, so coming back around to dialogue again. Um, I, I work for the Ottawa Coalition to End Violence Against Women. And the program that I run there is a, a male ally program. So we invite men to figure out what's our role and responsibility in ending violence against women. So one of the things I'm really interested in is how do we, uh, I'm always looking for ways to acknowledge the harm and uh, the experiences of victimization that men have because that's part of being able to uh, advocate for somebody else, right? And so when, when men come to work with us, part of that, there's an introspective piece it's about, well, how does this issue affect me? This isn't just me being a nice guy for somebody else. This is, you know, how does this float all of our, how does this raise, raise all of us up at the same time? Um, <clears throat> and so this connects to the question of, um, well, the things each of you have said. So like in terms of belief, I thought I would just share what, what I believe women means in my context is uh, not a guilty, not guilty verdict, but the belief that something is happening that's having a huge impact on that person. And so similar to what Alex was saying earlier about, um, and then the next step is how do we find out how to address that need that person has. Um, but that requires sort of, yeah, I've, I think we're all, right now we're really focused on like what are, the, what are the implications for men, right, in terms of if there is a false allegation. And we can all sort of feel the, ooh, like I don't want to be that guy that's falsely accused. And, and we're really tuned into that. Um, <clears throat> the next step I think that allows for it could allow for a really interesting dialogue, is what gives us the capacity to be curious about another person's experience. So I, I wouldn't say I had a good grasp of uh, what women and LGBTQ folks go through on a daily basis um, until I started doing this work a few years ago. And, um, you know, working in direct contact with people who've gone through various kinds of sexual harassment, sexual assault, and domestic abuse, and, and I also didn't have a great idea of um, what men go through when they're in that experience either. So it's been a very productive exercise to be curious about the impact on others. And I haven't heard a lot of curiosity about, um, like, why... I've heard the question of wh why are, do people seem to be overreacting in the Me Too, hashtag Me Too outpouring? Um, but not a lot of answers about how... Uh, from our point of view, what we can see is, um, you know, a lot of frustration of not being heard, not being understood, that this is a pattern, it's bubbling under the surface for a long time, and suddenly it's out in the open. <clears throat> frustration that the channels that we have to deal with it don't work very well. Um, and um, so I think I'm trying to distill this into a question. I think, for me, the question is, what gives us the capacity to be curious about other people's experience? And I'd love to hear from any of you about that. Did, did anyone have an answer? Oh, oh. Oh, I, I just have a, a brief one. I mean, I think you're talking about the capacity for empathy. And that, I, I strongly suspect is something that develops at a very young age. And there's a, there's a process, a series of stages, which infants or children go through in order to develop that. And I also suspect that there's a kind of window of opportunity. And if within that window of opportunity, something prevents the development of empathy, I, I'm, I'm not sure it can be easily developed at later stages in life. Um, the other thing I wanted to just mention, and this is not a this is not a criticism of the work that you do, but I'm just curious: why has the word violence become synonymous with violence against women? I don't understand that. Um, I don't understand either because I don't take the word to mean that. But you see that happening. Oh, I do. I do. I, it happens all over the place. We, we have a, what is it, a Royal Commission? Uh, I forget the exact title of the institution, but there's this, this study of 
missing and murdered Aboriginal women. Well, there are missing and murdered Aboriginal men too. Why was that separate? Why is that ignored? I don't understand these things. It's this kind of double standard that is very problematic. Um, uh, there was something else I wanted to say also, but I'll, I'll leave it. For, I'll leave it for now. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to admit that whenever I hear about programs to end violence against women, my back always goes up. Um, not because I don't think violence against women is a problem, but because men are far more likely to be the victims of violence. And it seems astounding to me that we hear so much about ending violence against women. Why? Why do we specify against women or against, as you said, LGBTQ people? Why not violent, end violence, period? Or, I mean, obviously we're never going to end violence, but why not give support to victims of violence without regard to their their gender? I, I, I have a... Um, uh, essay in, in the book that I've just shepherded into publication by a young man who was himself a victim of violence, random stranger attack, which affected him profoundly. For years, he you know carried a baseball bat and was afraid when he was out walking alone or even in a small group. He was attacked with his brother and sister. And he, every time he hears about campaigns to end violence against women, he thinks, you know, why, why is my experience of violence of less importance? And I, I, that's, it's one of the examples of the overt empathy gap in our culture that seems to me quite astounding. A quick response, maybe? Um, I think one of the things that motivates the that young men that come to work with us is that they recognize that violence against men is not seen as a gendered issue, but I think it is. And I think men are expected to tolerate violence, to, to suck it up. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not seen as a gendered issue, but actually in the unpacking of um, what's men's role in addressing violence against women, we start to understand, oh, these same social norms that uh, allow for, excuse me, <clears throat> The, the same expectations that tell men that, you know, in order to be a successful man, we have to dominate others in some way. Those are the same social norms that harm men. So I think there is value to talking about um, violence against men as a gendered issue. Um, and, yeah, I think that's sort of what I'd like to offer up to both of you because you've kind of asked a similar